ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm with my good friend, Chris Law, designer extraordinaire. Chris, welcome. I'm so happy to show him his new car. What do you think so far? Um, 30 years in the head is now on the street. So <laughs> yeah, it's come together really well. Yeah. Well, we're getting there. I love working with Chris. He's a designer. He designs tennis shoes, sneakers, depending on what part of the world you're from. And having, having, having Chris help me guide me and say, I want it like this, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. It's just been an absolute joy because we have created something together that is uh, remarkable and sort of the cafe racer style. Can you tell the people that are watching right now, what is a cafe racer? Why um, do they call it that? Yeah, I guess it's a period Mark One, Mark Two look that is kind of slightly on from standard. So it's bolt on parts and um, tuning parts that gives it that more of a kind of racier look um, but very much of an era right so it's definitely that early 60s look um, uh, with a lot of those tuning parts from Downton and um, Speedwell and all those parts and all those all those nice little goodies that you could buy as extras sort of bolted on and, and kind of just pep the thing up to make it uh, go from one cafe to another cafe a lot quicker. Wow! Back yeah. in the 60s, in yeah. England, yeah. it was a sort of a, a, not a race, but maybe just uh, who can get there quicker? Yeah, yeah. From one cafe to yeah, another. I guess so. Yeah, it comes from the bike culture, like from the Ton Up boys, like all the kind of uh, the rockers, I guess, that they used to go from. Ton Ups and rockers. Yeah, real cafe culture. Yeah. Was early, you Were know, the mods sort of in there too? Yeah, mid-60s. <laughs> mid yeah. Right on. Well, let's talk a little bit about the car. All right, so what we started out with was a genuine 1964, Four. 65? 64. It's 64. registered as 64 on the Heritage Certificate. 64 and Morris Cooper Yeah, Morris Cooper S and delivered here in 65. So it's a North American left-hand drive. Was, yeah. <laughs> Cooper S. Yeah. He made me, and I, he I mean, he had to twist my arm because... Right arm. Uh, <laughs> Because he says, it's got to be a right-hand drive. I'm like, no, it's a left-hand drive North American car. He says, I'm taking it back to England. It's got to be a right-hand drive. I'm like, uh, all right. Customer gets his wish. It's my command. So feels better as well. <laughs> and it looks better. Maybe to you. <laughs> well, so we started out with a 64 Morris Cooper S. Do you remember how many Morris Cooper S's they ever made? No. We'll have to look in the yeah, book yeah, yeah. and we'll post it online, but it's yeah. in the hundreds. It's not yeah. in the even in the thousands. Especially export ones. Handfuls. Not thousands, handfuls. Hundreds. So they're very rare. And this is a real numbers matching, real deal. And we may have done something crazy. We may have destroyed uh what was that piece guy's? of history. Yeah, what was his name? Um, McKinsey, McCluskey. 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 Yeah, yeah. This was a McCluskey built mini from the early 70s, late 60s. Now, if you don't know who McCluskey is, look him up. He was Carroll Shelby's right-hand man and he built Cobras. And this had these crazy Cobra style flares on it and everything. This was a real McCluskey Mini and we tore it apart. So yeah. maybe we made a mistake. It was all right for somebody then, but it looked awful. <laughs> it really yeah. did. I mean, there's pictures and posts on our Facebook, our YouTube of this car. It was red, had these crazy wheel arches on it. Very Cobra-ish, especially when we were taking it apart. I mean, this guy was a craftsman. It was, it was, metal, wasn't it? It was yeah. unbelievable, the quality and the hard work that went into him. So, hey, it's your car. You can do with it what you want. Yeah. Kudos it's to you. It's definitely not it's not purist it's probably not correct in many places but it's kind of what i wanted and that's what it's about right? that's right about that's right this was never going to be a concourse car or a trailer car and for starters it was red and black red mm -hmm. time red and i'm not a fan of red minis but i wanted to keep some of that some of the history so it's got the red and gold brocade interior to a little nod from when it was from there um but yeah i've never been a fan of red minis so if it's for me and i'm going to keep it i don't care what the, yeah uh, you, so yeah, you broke the, the heritage certificate colors, yeah. if you will, but yeah. it's all Cooper S. We use real Cooper S interior, Cooper S recliners, uh, red and gold brocade. Uh, I love the color gray. Everyone asks us, Chris, what yeah. color gray is that? It's it's a gray that I chose, really. Yeah. So it's not, it's not one of the BMC colors, but it's of that era. It's got that kind of muddy feel to it, and it feels right for the time. It's got a little bit of green in it, if you look at it, certain lights. So it's definitely my color gray that I wanted, and it's not, um, yeah, like I say, it's not a BMC pure color. 
-hmm. it's not Farina and it's not Grampian and it's not Smoke. It's one that I really wanted to try to achieve. Right. And we tried lots of dips. I tried lots of reds first, but I just couldn't get my head around it. <laughs> and I just didn't, I couldn't do it. So I was like, I don't care about what other people f think about it. It's my car and it's my grade. So mm -hmm. like it or lump it. Mm -hmm. so. Right on. Well, let's get into the details of the motor. So we started out with the genuine numbers matching original Cooper S engine. So this is a real S motor. Uh, we went through and replaced the pistons, main bearings, rod bearings. We used a RS cam from Piper. Uh, it's got the 12G uh, or the AEG 163 cylinder head, uh, big valves ported, twin inch and a half carbs with velocity stacks and some Piper uh, socks on the air cleaners. Gives it that cafe period kind of thing. Um, and then of course we did the uh, close ratio Cooper S gearbox, but we did go with straight cut drop gears because... I like the sound. <laughs> That's right, and I do too. Yeah. Some people don't, but I love it. Yeah. He loves it. You'll hear it. We also went through the suspension. It is still hydroelastic. Uh, we didn't pump it up all the way. We kept it a little low to keep that cafe racer look, you know, a little bit slammed. And it seems to be working pretty good. Let's see how the hydro is over these bumps. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so we're gonna move on into the interior here. And uh, Chris, I got a lot of questions for mm -hmm. you. Um, that rear view mirror. Tell me about that Lucas rear view mirror. So it's a Lucas 608 mirror that I normally run in my cars. It's a aftermarket accessory from the 60s. They had them in GT40s and Aston Martins. It's just a beautiful looking mirror and it just adds a little bit of detail to that. Now, what is this John Alley roll bar that looks familiar to me? Did I see that in the Italian job? Yeah, it's the same, it's the same uh, type bar as they do in the Italian jobs, the John Alley one original one that was really powder coated shipped from England. Um, I just love the look of that roll cage. It's, you know, yes, yeah, the Italian job roll cage. It just, it's very classic. Well, you brought a challenge to me because not only did when I installed that uh, John Alley roll bar, you gave me a third brake light. Yeah. What is that? We added, I wanted to add that in just because the Mark One lights are so low to the ground, especially here in the US with these oversized cars, that um, it just helps a little bit of, uh, Visual, if, you know, if someone's behind you, they can see the brake light more. Plus, it, it looks really good with the alignment of the roll cage in the middle of the of the screen. It's just an extra one that um, a lot of the racers have them as well. It just kind of again, it speaks to that race heritage that I like. Uh, also, we chose the cream cackle headliner. Yeah, yeah, we needed to replace that because it had been painted black at some somewhere along the lines, and it just didn't look right. So that came with a full new an interior, new carpet, the seats, um, the the door, um, door cards, the yeah. dash cards, all of that, all of that stuff to kind of bring it back to the original look of an original. It's not as an original, you know, because this is remakes, but they do a pretty good job. Yeah, I'm really proud of Newton Commercial. Uh, I was thrilled and over the moon when you told me we were going uh, red with the gold brocade because yeah. that is just drop dead sexy. I mean, I really love this interior yeah. with the gray, the red. It's just. It's, it's beautiful, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I've always it. liked red interior on grey cars, so that was definitely one thing that I wanted to do. And the grey cars never had the red interior, so um, the white cars had it, the red cars had it, so I wanted to, again, make it a little bit more personal to me, and there's little touches like the the um, Janspeed red uh, switch extenders, yeah. the Heritage ones. <laughs> when you handed those to me, I said, yeah. well, okay, I've, I've seen the aftermarket sort of rounded tipped ones, which are not the original 60s ones. Yeah. Then you've got the original 60s black, and they're trying to remake them. I've had a few of them, yeah. but I've never seen red. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of cool. There's a few people that have got in his car. Um, Paul Costin's got in his car, and that's when I saw it. And I asked Paul, I said, have you, have you got any more of them? Because they look so good and they look great in the car. <laughs> He didn't, but then another lad came up with some that I bought from him and he shipped them to me. So I'm really pleased with them. They're a nice little detail. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you've got to tell me about the Dulles dashboard. Yeah, so I'm really pleased that somebody went to the effort to remake those Dulles dash because they're such a cool looking um, addition from, from that era. It's era correct as well. That I really like. I like that it changes the shape from the traditional oval and, you, you know, it allows extra um, gauges and stuff like that. It just looks really cool. So I wanted to go with one of them. Yeah. It's got the um, Tom Kidd drop uh, bracket. 
Um, we've got an original Speedwell um, accelerator pedal, a couple of extra gauges there. Um, yeah, just a couple of little pieces here and there just kind of like make it a little bit more sporty. Again, it talks to that cafe racer look, which isn't over the top, it's more subtle, it's a little bit more classy, but still kind of like um, non-standard, you know, kind of um, modification with a little bit of class. Yeah, I really love that 120 mile an hour Mark I chrome pointed bezel genuine Cooper S Speedo. Uh, I like that you chose uh, some of the bezels in pointed black yeah. and then you went with these really cool Smith's voltmeter and clock in a chrome uh, sort of under dash mount. Uh, just really tied it well together. Yeah. I mean, it's so cool. And they're also a little bit like non-matching i almost wanted it to not be too matchy matchy because it, yeah. it felt like you bought parts over the time and you just added them in so again it's not meant to be perfect it's meant to be unperfect which gives it character you know? boy i'll say what a great way to put it all right chris let's talk about the wheels tires brakes and suspension yep yeah. so with the wheels they're uh mini spares uh rose petals 4.75s um but i repainted them to more gloss black because I wanted them to look different to the ones that everybody's now running. Um, and then it's got the center caps that makes it look more like proper rose petals, like the Vortz ones. Um, I haven't got any Vortz ones yet. If anything turns up, I would love to upgrade. <laughs> but right now, I wanted the proper look. So I did that as well. And again, like I said, I painted them gloss black because it makes them look different from the ones that everybody is now running. You did allow me to put some adjustable lower control arms on it, some adjuster, uh, adjustable tie rods, polyurethane bushings, and the mini sport four piston alloy calipers yeah. on the vented slotted rotors. It's got and mini fins on the back as well. Oh, super yeah, fins. Yeah, and you know what? Fins, I totally yeah. screwed up. Those were not the vented slotted. Those were the 7.5 uh, solid rotors right. is actually what we put on there right. because we couldn't get the 7.9s to fit under the rose okay. petals. That's what happened. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it it accelerates, it goes around a corner, and it stops. Yeah. <laughs> they, they need a bit of bedding in, but I think they're going to be yeah. much nicer. All right. Well, that was a good day. Yeah. That was the end of part one. Stay tuned for part two. Yeah.